So get started. So we were doing basic mathematical physics, right, in the previous class. That Are you together? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, this was the last topic. No? So, I started integrals last class. In integrals, I told you there are two types of array. One is called indefinite, and the second is called Definite integrals. So for indefinite, what will you do? You're not going to take any limits. Whereas for definite integrals, you're going to use limits. Right? So just to recollect the topic again, suppose I give a problem of 2 to 5. Okay. X power 4 dx. What is the answer going to be? Just tell me, okay, if the numbers are big, just tell me how you are supposed to do So you will get x power, x power 5 divided by 5 between 2 to 5. So substitute the upper limit, 5 power 5 minus lower limit, 2 power 5, the whole divided by 5. Is that right? So this is going to be the answer. And what does this represent? This represents the area made by the curve x power 4 with respect to x axis. The previous class, I think I would have told you that you can draw graph for anything. Right? So it is x power 5 divided by 5 between the points 2 to 5. Is it clear? Right? Similarly, if it is between 0 to pi sin x dx. What is the answer? So minus cos x between 0 to 5. So what will you get? Minus cos 5 minus of minus cos 0. So minus, you know, I don't think you know the value of cos pi. Cos pi is minus 1 plus cos 0 is 1. Okay. So it is going to be 1 plus 1 and the answer is 2.
just wait a minute. Actually, the answer should come out as zero. Answer should be zero. Actually, there is some mistake. Minus cos pi minus. No, no, it's right. It's right. It's right. <clears throat> zero to two pi would have been zero. Yeah. Shall we proceed? So this is all about the basic mathematical physics. Right. This is what we have already discussed. But of course, there should be an application of why we are learning all these things, right? For that, we need to go to the next chapter. But before that, did you all receive the assignment in the app for units and measurements? Yes, sir. Okay. I'll check. Last one was a Okay. So work on that and try to submit it. Next week we can have a test. Okay. Next uh, coming Monday we can there will be a math test. So sir would have told you already, right? So first chapter test in math on uh, Monday, and this one units and measurement we can have it some time in the next week. But before that, solve the assignment. The assignment is slightly tough. Get your doubts clarified. Okay. You can refer the textbook. For, you can refer the textbook. For it. Don't worry. It's not very hard. So when I set it itself, I tried to remove most of the questions where like uh, capacitance are based on here and there, but I removed it. One or two you would have got it here and there. But still fine, you try to refer the textbook and do it. Whatever I've explained only is there, except that conductivity, electrical part of it. That's fine, That I'll clear the doubts. Ma'am told chemistry test on Saturday. So work on that. First chapter, no? whole concept. Uh, yes. So we'll go to the next chapter. Motion in a straight line. Okay. Um, in some books, this is also referred to as motion in one dimension. Okay. So what happens in this chapter is we'll be concerned about the motion of the object. Right? As the name suggests, we'll be concerned about the way the object is moving in one dimension. When I say one dimension, what comes to your mind? In a straight line. Right? So this is what we are going to study about. So, but before that, you need to know a branch of physics called as kinematics. Have you heard of this? Have you heard of this anywhere? No, no. Considering you're almost there. You'll not be concerned about the cause, but you'll be concerned only about the motion of the object. So write it down. So it is a branch of physics which deals with motion of the object, but not the cause of it. So it is a branch of physics which deals with the motion of an object, but not the cause of it. This feedback. This one will do a small experiment.
this term. Shall we proceed? Yes. So kinematics is basically, it is a branch of a physics which deals with the motion of the object, but you are not concerned about the cause which is making the object move. Is that right? Next. We will see what are the basic terminologies used in kinematics. Yes, the topic is basic terminologies in kinematics. So as the name suggests, we are going to be concerned about the terms which are used in kinematics to understand the motion of an object, of which the first term would be distance. So when I say distance, it is the total path length covered by an object. So it is a total path length covered by an object when it goes from one point to another. So let us consider a scenario where an object is moving from point A to point B. When it has to move from one point to another, what can happen is it can have multiple ways in which it wants to move. So I could have taken this path, which I'll call it as path number one. I could have taken another path like this, which I'll call it as path number two, or else I could have taken a direct path like this, which I'll call it as path number three. So if you see in each scenario, what is happening is the distance traveled by the object is different. Because when I say distance, I'm talking about the total path length. Means if you take this total length which the object has traveled, then the, the total length is going to give you the distance of the distance traveled by the object. And an important point to be noted is distance is a scalar quantity. And the SI unit of distance is going to be meter and CJ's unit is going to be centimeter. The CJ's unit is going to be centimeter. The second term that we need to concentrate upon is called displacement. So displacement is the shortest path length. So it is defined as the shortest path length traveled by an object. So when I say shortest path length, if you take the previous scenario into consideration between the points A and B, this was path number one, this was path number two, and this is path number three. If you observe out of all the path lengths that are taken into consideration, the third path length is the shortest path the object has traveled. 
and when you say the shortest path length it simply means a line joining the end points so to put it in simple terms if you want to find the displacement of an object just draw a line joining the starting point and the ending point then that length will give you the displacement traveled by the object generally we say displacement covered by the object okay now displacement is a vector quantity and its si unit is meter and cgs unit is still the same centimeter from here an important point to be noted is distance can be or distance is always possible whereas displacement can be positive negative or zero as well because it's a vector quantity okay so when do you say it is positive for that let's understand when the object is traveling from a to b whenever you are dealing with a vector quantity the first thing to be noted is you need to first assign a reference direction which we call it as sign convention like how you would have learned in your ray optics in your 10th standard so when you take one of the directions to be positive if suppose you take the rightward direction to be positive then by default if an object is moving in the leftward direction it becomes negative so when an object travels from a to b for example in this direction since your reference direction says that the rightward direction is positive we say displacement in this scenario is positive suppose the same object is moving between the end points but not from a to b rather it is moving from b to a then you say it is negative because you are the one who fixed the direction to it now when can it be zero that is when the object goes from point a to point b and returns back from b to a that is when it completes a round trip what happens Is displacement is going to be zero, so that is why I told you displacement can either be positive, negative, or a zero. Those who are online are able to understand. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Shall we proceed? so from this we can conclude that magnitude of displacement you read it as magnitude of displacement is less than or at the max equal to distance so displacement can either be less than the distance or at the max it can be equal to distance so when will it become equal to is when the displacement of the object is taking place in a specified direction so the reason why i mentioned magnitude is i have put a modulus around the displacement we know what is modulus what is a modulus give you it always gives you a positive value so modulus always gives you a positive value
Is that point clear? The next set of physical quantity that we are supposed to see is speed and velocity. Now we will discuss what is speed. So if you are able to calculate total distance traveled by the object per unit time, then that physical quantity is called as speed. So how you write speed is speed is equal to basically it is written as the ratio of distance traveled per unit time. Speed is written as the distance traveled per unit time. And the symbol used for speed is generally d. And for distance, we use d. And for time, we use small t. So remember, in physics, small t is used for time, and capital T is used for temperature. Small t is used for time, and capital T is used for temperature. S is for displacement. Distance we go with the next important point is it is a scalar quantity and the SI unit is going to be meter per second and CGS unit is going to be centimeter per second. So speed can either be measured in meter per second or centimeter per second. Now the counterpart of speed is velocity. And for velocity also, we generally use the symbol V only. Okay. It is basically defined like this. It is the rate of change of displacement. I repeat, it's defined as the rate of change of displacement. So the first point to be noted here is rate basically means with respect to time. Change is represented with a symbol delta. You read it as D E L T A delta, like how we saw it in the case of slope. And displacement is represented by the symbol S. So combining all these parameters, we can say V is equal to delta S divided by delta T. And this is what we call it as, more specifically, we call it as average velocity. Delta because it's changed now. For distance, you'll take the length and measure it. Whereas for displacement, you need to calculate the change. Why I mentioned changes? If the object is traveling only in one direction, there is absolutely no heading. Right? See, for example, let's say the distance between A and B is 5 meter. Let's say the object has gone from A to B, means how much displacement has taken place plus 5 meter. Okay, if you take the right hand side, right hand side as possible, and from B, let's say the particle is traveling back one meter to the left. Now, what is the change? So, what is the net displacement of the particle? It is no more. If I ask you the distance, you will say it is five plus one. But if I ask you the displacement, you will say five minus one. It is four. Why did that minus come? Because object traveled in the leftward direction. So this is what is called as change. That is why if you see the previous case, I use the word total. Total means sum. Distance can never be negative. So there is no concept of change. Whereas when you talk about displacement, 
you take the direction into consideration since it being the vector quantity. So that is why I need to use the word change of something. Okay. And this velocity is what we call it as average velocity. The next important term is called as V is equal to ds by dt, which we will call it as instantaneous velocity. So basically, when you talk about velocity, there are two types. What are they? One is called as average value, and the second is called as instantaneous value. Average is measured between a measurable quantity of time. Instantaneous, as the name suggests, is measured exactly at that instant. For example, you want to know what is the speed of an object at fifty second. That is called instantaneous velocity. Whereas, if you want to know what is the speed, what is the velocity of the object? Between zero to five seconds, we measure average velocity. So when you use the word between, it is average velocity. When you use the word at, it is instantaneous velocity. This is a very 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 important point. Is it clear? Now when I talk about velocity, this is also a vector quantity. And its SI unit is going to be meter per second, and the CTS unit is going to be obviously centimeter per second. Is it clear to this? Right. So moving on to the fifth quantity, which is called as acceleration. Acceleration is represented by the symbol small a. Right? So it is defined as the rate of change of velocity. So again, if you see the word, you are using the word rate of change of something. What is the change that is taking place? It is with respect to velocity. So how do you write acceleration as? Delta V divided by delta T. Is it clear? So wherever delta comes, what kind of a quantity is that? It's called average acceleration. Whereas if I write A is equal to ds divided by dt, we call it as instantaneous acceleration. So if you write A is equal to dv by dt, you call it as instantaneous acceleration. Okay. So just to add a point, average acceleration can be represented by a symbol like this and instantaneous acceleration can be represented with the Subscript IN. IN stands for instantaneous. Now, if we ask a question of why, what kind of a physical quantity is acceleration? I repeat. Now, if you ask a question of what kind of physical quantity is acceleration, it is also a vector quantity. The reason being very simple because it is velocity divided by time. Velocity itself is a vector quantity. Then what is going to be the SI unit of it? Db meter per second per second or meter per second square and its CGS unit is going to be 
सेंटीमीटर पर सेकेंड स्क्वायर Having all these definitions in mind, now we are going to concentrate on the next part of this chapter, that is equations of motion. So, but before that, I would like to explain you certain other terms as well that are involved. One is called. Okay, I'll write down the heading as. types of motion which can be classified into two types one is called uniform motion and the second is called non uniform motion under non uniform motion it can be further sub classified as uniformly accelerated motion and non uniformly accelerated motion so let us look at them one by one first if i want to understand what is uniform motion uniform basically means same okay and motion obviously means when the object is changing its position with respect to time means when an object is traveling between two points a and b and if you break the journey into multiple instances in the sense you break it into multiple time intervals so that each time interval is the same right for example if it takes t seconds for the object to travel between the points a to b and let's say you are breaking it into n t seconds so what will be the time value for each breakage it will be t by n t by n so on how many times it is going to be for n times now if you measure the distance for every t by n seconds and if the distance comes out to be the same i repeat for every time interval that is broken if you see that the distance traveled by the object is exactly the same then that kind of a motion is called as uniform motion so what happens in a uniform motion distance traveled see some books refer to traveled as traversed also both are same so here i'm using the word travel distance traveled by the object is same in regular intervals of time then the object is said to be in uniform motion accepted if that is going to be about the definition then what mathematical values is going to give us so if i say the amount of distance traveled by the object per unit time is the same or if i use the word uniform then what can i say then i can say that the speed of the object is also uniform so when the speed of the object is uniform an important point to be noted here is acceleration of the object is zero so what do we mean by acceleration acceleration means there is a change in speed or velocity taking place with respect to time when there is no change in speed taking place the object does not accelerate at all 
So there are two points that I want you people to note it here. One is when I say uniform motion, it has a definition saying that the distance covered by the object is same in equal intervals of time. That is first point. But mathematically, it means that the speed of the object is same and the acceleration of the object is zero. These are the two important points I want you to make a note of. Am I clear? The second point is about non uniform motion. Obviously, it will be the counterpart of uniform motion, right? So, what can you say about non uniform motion? You can clearly say that distance traveled by the object is not same in regular intervals of time. So to put it in simple terms, a motion which is not uniform is called as non-uniform. That's it. So when we say distance traveled by the object is not the same in regular intervals of time, what can I say about the speed? The speed is not uniform. So when the speed is not uniform with respect to time, acceleration of the object is non-zero. That is why if you see uniformly accelerated motion and non-uniformly accelerated motion are classified only under non-uniform motion. So this I can call as the Mathematical condition. So under non-uniform motion, what I'm going to do is I'm going to deal with a subcategory 2A, which I'll call it as uniformly accelerated motion. So first point I would like to stress upon here is do not get confused between uniform motion and uniformly accelerated motion. So uniformly accelerated motion has something to do with the uniformity of the acceleration. Whereas uniform motion has something to do with the uniformity of the distance traveled by the object or speed. Okay. So as the name suggests, uniformly accelerated motion means if acceleration of object is constant throughout its journey, object is set to be under, object is set to be under uniformly accelerated motion. So mathematically, what I can say is delta V by delta T, which is acceleration, is a constant. So to put it in simple terms, if the velocity of the object is changing equally in regular intervals of time, then you say that the object is under uniformly accelerated motion. Let me explain this clearly. Suppose I have an object traveling from A to B. Let's say it is traveling for five seconds. So I break the journey into five parts, which I'll call it as C, D, E, F. Okay. Where each part is calculated, each part is calculated for one second each. 
So sum of all these one seconds put together is going to give me a five second. Let's say the object has started with zero initial velocity, and the object has reached the point C with a velocity of one meter per second. Now, when the object has moved from C to B, let's say from one meter per second, the object has reached the point B with a speed of two meter per second, and from two. If you if you see from D to E, it has reached with three meter per second. Then it has reached with four meter per second. Then at the end, it is having five meter per second. Now, if I take the same time interval, one second, what is the change in velocity that has taken place? So between point A C, what is the change in velocity? It is one meter per second divided by delta t is how much in one second, which is going to give me. One meter per second square means the acceleration of the object is still one meter per second square, but the speed has got increased in such a way that the change in speed is always a constant. If this kind of a scenario occurs, you say that the object is moving under a uniformly accelerated motion. Okay. So on the counter part, we have this two B, which we call it as non-uniform. or non uniformly accelerated motion as the name suggests obviously acceleration of the object is not a constant value throughout its journey means the change in speed with regular intervals of time is not a constant Shall I proceed? The copy. Right. Those are online. Are you done? Are you able to understand? Yes, sir. sir. Proceed. Write down the next heading as equations of motion for an object which follows uniformly accelerated. so the equations of motion that we are going to derive now are applicable that is you can use them in problems only when you say that the acceleration of the object is constant throughout its journey so first equation is we have v is equal to u plus kt and the second equation is s is equal to ut plus half at square and the third equation is v square minus u square is equal to 2 as in all the three conditions acceleration of the object is a constant now having said this you can derive the equations of motion using two methods one is called a graphical method 
and the second is called calculus method. So first we are going to use the basic definitions of acceleration, velocity and displacement to derive the equations of motion using graphical method. So for graphical method, you remember, you always need to start the definition with average value in the sense for the first equation, V is equal to U plus AD. I'm going to consider a scenario where an object is moving between the points A and B. And let's say at the initial point, the velocity is U and the time is zero. Let's say at the final point, the velocity is B and the time is P. And throughout the journey, the object has got accelerated with a uniform value P. Now, if you see the basic definition of acceleration, it says it is the rate of change of velocity. So, delta V divided by delta T, which is the average value. But what is delta V? Delta always represents final minus initial. So the final value is V minus the initial value is U divided by the final time is T minus the initial time is 0. So this will be V minus U divided by T which is A. From this if I rearrange the equation V minus U is equal to AT or V is equal to U plus AT and this holds as the first equation of motion. Can take it, but this expression needs initial velocity. That is why we have it. If you want, you can write V is equal to U plus A to T2 minus T1 also. That would have also been possible, but this is the standard form. That is why it is zero. Okay. Second is S is equal to U T plus half A T square. If I take the basic axis, then I previously mentioned that x-axis is called as independent axis. And on the x-axis, you will always take the independent variable. So the independent variable in physics is most of the times, it is time itself. And on the y-axis, we have velocity. So since you're talking about a uniformly accelerated motion, then the graph for V is equal to U plus AT is what we need to draw, right? If you see the graph of V is equal to U plus AT, it will be a straight line like this. Where this point will be 0 comma u. So this is the origin. This point I will take it as a. And let's say the final point is obtained at some instant t where this point will be t comma u plus a t. Number Whenever you have y-axis and x-axis, mathematically, there are only two operations that we can perform. One is called differentiation and the second is called integration. So basically, why do we differentiate to find the slope? And why do we integrate? We need to find the area. So if you have a physical quantity, which is 
y axis divided by x axis for example here y axis is v and x axis is time so if i have to divide v divided by t v by t is basically like you are finding the slope so when you do v by t what do you get you get acceleration whereas if you do y into x if this is y by x if you do y into x in this scenario it is v into t so what is the product of velocity and time going to give you it will give you the displacement so to put it in simple terms if a velocity time graph is given to you and you want to find the displacement of the object then you need to find the area under the velocity time graph i repeat it listen you have y axis and x axis no so if you do y by x if you do y by x mathematically it is called differentiation because y by x is slope slope is ratio whereas area is product product of y axis and x axis so if suppose in this scenario i take v and t if i want to do v by t what will i get velocity by time is acceleration means slope of a velocity time graph gives you acceleration whereas area under a velocity time graph that is the product of y axis and x axis v into t will give you displacement so whenever they give you velocity time graph and you are asked to calculate the displacement what are you supposed to do find the area made by the curve with the x axis so this area if you are able to find that will give you the displacement let me call this point as b and this as c if you see area of trapezium o a b c is how much half into base into sum of parallel sides so this is the basic formula for area of a trapezium so this is going to give us half into if you observe the base the base is the base is time so half into base into sum of parallel sides so this height is u this is at okay so sum of the parallel sides is u plus u plus at that is going to give you half into t into 2u plus at then what is it going to give you ut plus half at square but since you found the area made by the graph with respect to x axis this area is what is called as displacement and this holds as the second equation of motion Am I clear? The people who are online. and the third equation that we need to derive is v square minus u square is equal to 2as if you observe this equation this is 
free from the variable time. So using the first two equation, that is V is equal to U plus AT and S is equal to UT plus half AT square, we can derive the third equation for that. From this equation, I'll write T is equal to V minus U divided by A. I'll take this and substitute it here. Then S will be equal to U into V minus U divided by A plus half into A to V minus U divided by A the whole square. So S will be equal to UV minus U square divided by A plus half into V square plus U square minus 2UV divided by A square and you have an A here. So this and this will get cancelled. So you're left out with UV minus U square divided by A plus half into or I'll write like this. V square by 2A plus U square by 2A minus UV divided by A. So if you observe this, it is UV by A minus U square by A plus V square by 2A plus U square by 2A minus UV divided by A. UV by A and UV by A will get cancelled. So V square by 2A minus, minus U square by A plus U square by 2A is U square divided by 2A. And this will be equal to S. From this we can say V square minus U square is equal to 2 into A into S. And this is going to be the third equation of motion. Am I clear with this? So, but I use the word, we are deriving it graphically, right? Can we use an alternate way to derive this? How? How will you use an alternate way to derive this? Calculus, we are using graphical.
this Thursday. No? You have informed them, no? No, I, I think we had a conversation on Spirit at IT Day. Oh. Okay. Yeah, I have to because uh, there are some. I think there had been a miscommunication. They are not even prepared also because they thought it's only till seven. I didn't inform them. You were informed, huh? Oh. If you want to take, then yeah, maybe five minutes at close. Yeah, yeah, it's okay because I'm almost done with the topic. This chapter is almost done actually. But did you bring the math book? You got it, huh? you? But you knew it, huh? I'm done in twenty five, five minutes. I'll be done if you want it. But sir has informed you, right? Then, sorry. Okay. You didn't get a. Yeah. So this distance is u, and this distance is v. Is it right? And this distance is t. So what is the area of trapezium? Half into base into sum of the parallel sides u plus v. So half into time is what t is equal to v minus u divided by a. Is it right? So v minus u divided by a, <coughs> v minus u divided by a into v plus u, accepted. And this is what this is equal to displacement. This is also equal to displacement. So a minus b into a plus b, v square minus u square divided by two a is equal to s, which implies v square minus u square is equal to two a s. So this is the alternate way to derive the third equation of motion. So this is an alternate way to derive the third equation of motion. Okay. So with this, we are done with. I'll say eighty percent of the chapter. Only thing is, we need to concentrate on uh, deriving the equation of motion using calculus. Okay, calculus. We will be using that area, limits, integral, and all those things that we can see. Not a big deal. Okay, is there any doubt in this? You're clear. Right. So those who are online, are you clear? Clear, sir. Yes, sir. Maybe four to six forty two. Is there anyone coming to pick you up? What time? I'll talk to sir. Just two minutes, please.
So math next you will have it on Tuesday only. Because you have to leave now. Anyways. So we'll get back to the topic. Then we can move to the next part, no? calculus part. Maybe one or two I'll explain. So next part is equations of motion using calculus method. Whenever you are deriving equations of motion using calculus method, you need to go with the concept of instantaneous values. So whenever you are going with graphical method, you use average values. Whenever you are going with calculus method, you use instantaneous values. So the first equation for V is equal to u plus at, we will use the instantaneous acceleration a is equal to dv divided by dt. So from this what you can do is, you can write dv is equal to a into dt means dt is taken to the other side. The next step what we can do is, integrating with proper limits. So when I integrate with proper limits, I get integral of dv is equal to integral of a dt. So the one, the number which you write at the bottom is called as the lower limit and the number which you write at the top is called as the upper limit. So you need to look at the variable which is there inside d. So time is, if you take the initial time to be zero, the velocity corresponding to initial time on the left hand side will be u. Similarly, if you take the final time to be t, the velocity corresponding to time t would be v. And remember, integral of dv is v. Integral of dv is, I repeat, integral of dv is v between the limits u to v is equal to a is a constant because we are discussing about uniformly accelerated motion. So this will become a into integral of dt between 0 to t. So if you substitute the upper limit, you will get v minus u is equal to a into integral of dt is t again between the intervals 0 to t. So again, substitute the upper limit t minus the lower limit 0. So v minus u will be equal to a into t which implies v is equal to u plus a t. So this is how you derive the first equation of motion using calculus method. I hope the steps are clear. Which integration? So integral of dv is v. Integral of dv is v because integral and derivative are counter operations of each other. Similarly, when you have integral of a dt, whatever is a constant can be taken out of the integral. So a is constant because you are talking about uniformly accelerated motion. So integral of a dt, integral and d will get cancelled, you will get a into t.
Shall I proceed? So second equation of motion, S is equal to ut plus half at square. For this, we will use A is equal to dv divided by dt. Sorry, we need displacement, no? For this, we will use V is equal to ds by dt, which implies ds is equal to V dt. So ds will be equal to, in the place of V, I can replace it with u plus at times dt. Now again, integrating on both sides, with proper limits, what will we get? Integral of ds is equal to u plus at times dt and this is also integrated. So right hand side, I need to take the limits of time and left hand side, I need to take the limits of displacement. So when t is equal to zero, displacement is zero. When t is equal to t, Displacement is S. So integral of ds will be S between 0 to S. This I can write it as integral of 0 to t u multiplied with dt plus integral of 0 to t at multiplied with dt. So I split each term with respect to dt. So this will be equal to Whatever is a constant can be taken out of the integral. So u is taken out of the integral. u into integral of dt between 0 to t plus a is taken out of the integral, integral of t dt between 0 to t. So this will be equal to ut plus a into integral of t dt is t square by 2. This is also between 0 to t. And here you substitute the upper limit s minus 0 on the left hand side. So s is equal to ut plus half into a into the upper limit t square minus the lower limit 0. So you will get s is equal to ut plus half a t square and this is the second equation of motion.
and the last equation of motion is v square minus u square is equal to s. For this, we will use a is equal to dv divided by dt, which can also be written as dv divided by ds into ds divided by dt. I just multiplied with ds and divided with ds. So when I write a is equal to dv by ds into, we know that ds by dt can be written as v, which implies a times ds is equal to v times dv. Now again, integrating on both the sides with proper limits. So here I need to take the limit of v, here I need to take the limit of s. So initially, when the displacement was zero, the velocity was u. Finally, when the displacement was s, the final velocity is v. So if I take that a outside, a into integral of ds is going to be s between 0 to s is equal to integral of v dv is going to be v square divided by 2 between the points u and v. So this will be a into s minus 0 is equal to v square by 2 minus u square by 2 which implies v square minus u square will still be equal to 2 times a s and this is the third equation of motion. So with this, as I told you, we are done with now 90% over. There is only one concept left, that is the relative velocity. After this, this chapter, we need to concentrate more on solving problems. That we'll see tomorrow. So before that, revise the equations. Revise the basic terms. It will take only 10 to 15 minutes. So that you will understand problems better. I can te I'll teach you the technique of how to read a question and how to apply the right formula the right place. Okay. So that's it. Those who are on there, any doubt? No doubt, sir. Okay. We'll wind up. Thank you, sir.
kind of 